Frozen, Frozen Heroes. Gonna tell you about Frozen, Frozen Heroes. Gonna tell you about comic books, costumes, facts, boots, and other stuff. In this week's issue, Clayface. Welcome into Bros, Foes, and Heroes. I'm Zach, joined as always by the marvelous man himself, Mr. Mike. Hello. Um, and now we're back together, together again. Yeah, we had a, we had a, it's, it's we had been, a little bump there. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that you're feeling better. You had some health stuff. I had one health day where. Why do you you word it like that though? And it makes me sound so sick. Oh no no You've no! You've had no. health stuff. I no, had you just had health day. stuff. Yeah. It, oh, sorry. Yeah. I actually, I guess that mine was two days. Yours was more serious than mine. Is well, all I, know, I meant but by still, that. Right. But it's okay, just so funny the way you're like. Just calm down. To. Um. So, <laughs> I I had this day where my body just kind of shut down, yeah. and it's funny. Like we, I, I just got done doing a different podcast. And the subject was, how do you ask for help? Mm-hmm. And I think that's huge for all of us, honestly. And I'm not, I know this is not a podcast where we teach <laughs> lessons or anything. But uh, asking for help is a big deal. And, and they were absolutely right when they said that society sets it up so men don't ask for help. You know, and, and for me, I did this by myself for three and a half, four years or whatever it was. Right. And so I always think, well, shit, I'll just do it. You know, and I know you're kind of the same way too. You just plow ahead and do it. But I had a moment where somebody who works here was asking me how to do this thing. And so I went over the entire thing, right? From audition to the board and all this stuff. And guess what? I I don't have to answer those questions anymore. You know, she asked for help. I gave it to her. Now she's empowered to do these things where normally it feels like, I do it all myself, and then I get mad because I'm doing it all myself. You know, and I just it's it's like this weird circle. I'm not sure how that came up on Bros, Foes, and Heroes, but yeah. hey, how you doing, Zach? Good, <laughs> good. Not the all right, not the start of the show I expected it's been a day. from you, but yeah. no, I get it. I Mental get health it. Well, is important. It is. No, it's very important. Um, I'm glad that you know you're able to f- you know find yourself in things. Not a, don't show it off if it's not a sponsor. Today's vitamin water. Forever you cooking up mine. I don't know how they feel about that. Maybe they wouldn't like this yeah. show. Um, no, today's show, I talked about it on World's Finest Wednesday last week. We were going to do, uh, Mike and I are going to re-record Killing Joke. We'll do that sometime next week. Um, or next week, I guess this week. Cause this We've is had going a rough to be on run Monday. of it here lately. <laughs> yeah, man. It's odd. Uh, and we were reminded uh, by a comment, and I absolutely loved it, of how kind of... Um, lost my train of thought of word no of how I, just kind of funny it was the fact that you used to be so paranoid <laughs> about checking the audio that it's been the audio that's been the problem the past couple of weeks you remember you remember how big a deal it was when we moved was, to the, we moved to the last place and i could see the button was red or green fr- through the window and i thought oh my god that's such a big deal now there would be times i don't know if you could tell during old podcasts <laughs> but there would be times that you would stand up Yep. Like you would just stand up yep. and like look over uh-huh. the glass mm-hmm. and you could hear the ruffle sometimes and I would just keep talking. Yeah. And he'd be like, You come down, you just give me a thumbs up and I'd be like, Oh, okay, he checked to see if we were still recording. <laughs> there were times when we weren't though. No, that is We've true. We've done that as well. That's yeah. happened plenty of times. I did that's what happened with the promo comics for the Kool Aid and the T- yeah. uh, Justice League and inside uh, the NBA on TNT. They're lost episodes. No audio at all. Yeah. Um, we'll get to that at some point in time. Uh, but I, today, I, I I did offer to go back and revoice it. Yeah, but just by yourself, and there's no <laughs> way I could sync that audio up. No, 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 no. You just play it and record me, and I'll do both the voices. You're gonna do me too? Sure. Okay. Hey guys, welcome hold to the on, hold on, hold on. Is that what you think I sound like? <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> I always okay. kind of revert to. Um, I think that's kind of a Peanuts voice, right? Yeah, it kind of hey, sounds like that. Wah, 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 wah. Um, let me try to... <laughs> I was also reminded that <laughs> last week's episode by myself was the most on track uh, yeah, and on the rails fault. an episode is, but I'm glad to have you back, Mike. Thanks, man. So what we're doing this week, as I talked about last week, is Clayface, kind of as a whole, going to talk about the character just a little bit to start, and then we're going to get into a really great one-shot from 
this year, I believe, but it's uh, One Bad Day, and it's a really cool Clayface story. So I'm going to give the history, a little bit of history real quick, take a quick break, and then come back and dive into our story for the episode. I have heard but, a lot about Clayface. Do you know anything about Clayface? I don't really know other than he's a big blob, right? Okay. I feel like I feel like he's... Ca- well, did you ever watch? Did you ever watch Giggle Snort? That's something that's made up. No, it's not. There's a, there's a show out there called Giggle Snort Hotel, and I would watch Is it that as a sequel. No, okay. I would watch it as a kid, and down in well, I guess he was on different levels, but there was a a, a mound of clay. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know where it came from, but there's a mound of clay okay. in this hotel, uh-huh. and it would talk to people. The hotel would. No, the clay would. Uh- but isn't they'd the be cl- like, oh, blah, blah, and they'd go, yeah, I know, Mr. Clay, that's really a th-, you know. So it was almost like okay. a Boomhauer, King of the Hill situation, yeah, 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 where it just said stuff and people understood it, but you couldn't understand. Like, it. like the Peanuts teacher, kind of like right. the voice you have for me. And so it's all coming together. See, yeah, I see that. And that's that's what I think of Clayface. Every time I think Clayface, I think that blob of clay that talks. Okay, well, or what- a Dick Tracy villain. Okay, I get that too. Yeah. When he first appeared back in Detective Comics number forty. Um, which is barely, uh, uh, man, it went to the wrong layout. I had That's that cool okay. layout set up. It was cool looking, go. though. Either way. Um, we got options, first man. appeared uh, back in Detective Comics number 40, and I love when I show things and Mike's just lost on his phone. <laughs> no, um, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I, was fixing, I was looking something up. I'm so sorry. Go ahead. Oh, man. So, I was seeing if there is actually a Dick Tracy villain called Clayface. Anyway, oh, as there's you a can fly see... Face. As you can kind of see there, that's the first clay face. His name is Basil Carlisle or Basil oh. Basil. Wow, what a Basil. name! Carlo, Carlo, K, Carlo, Cal- <sighs> man. Here, let me full screen. Oh, it'll come up later. Anyway, <laughs> welcome to our podcast about the English language. I love how I know all this stuff, and immediately as we start recording, my brain just turns to mush, yeah, and I, I sound just like an idiot. No, you don't. Um, but he is an actor uh, and a disgruntled actor who is essentially killing people off of this movie set. Um, and he's dressed as one of the villains he played in his old movie, uh, in an old movie that was called Clayface. So oh. he dressed as the monster, but it was really just an actor. And I'm trying to find... Why is he disgruntled? Because um, they're remaking his movie without him. Oh. Yeah. I bet that happens a lot now. Uh, I didn't mean to flip through all of this. I could have taken it down, but there we go. Um, it is... Yeah, Basil Carlo. Who Basil is going to be Carwell? Carlo. K A R L O. Oh, K. Oh, so it's kind of like Boris Karloff. Yes. That ah. was where I think Bob Kane got inspiration got from it. for the name. Basil Corl. Carlo. Carl- Carlo. That is the name of our um, Clayface in the One Bad Day story we will cover. And he is an actor. And okay. so it does pay homage to. The first one. Um, there was a second. There's been multiple clay faces, just like with a lot of characters, how there are different iterations of it. There's yeah. been like, I know at least of a good three, four solid ones before we got into the 80s, because there's the mud pack, which I think is like three different clay or four different clay pack. faces that are brought up in that. It's like the rat pack, but they all have clay faces. They were all, no, they don't all have, but they were all like the villain clay face at one point in time. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that makes more sense. I thought there was just like this group of clay based people that that were evil i mean kind of like they're all clay face in their own way mm. like okay. so that clay face at first was just an actor um the second one matt hagan which was a little bit later in the um batman run i really need to just switch to that there we go as we get to look at him there um he was a wow like treasure hunter kind of looks like the thing down there at the bottom well what he can do this clay face where the other one was just a actor who dressed up like one this clay face could like turn into any object so it's right? like a shapeshifter yeah so like he turned himself into clay or into clay into a snake hmm. he turned himself to an eagle to fly away like he could shapeshift into things yeah. and he was a treasure hunter who talks about how he saw this strange pool and when he swam through it there was like some kind of uh, protoplasm i think it was um that like turned him into this like once he came back to land this like clay feature 
but the more he thought about like what he looked like, the more he could turn himself like back into his human form. Well, he's like or a he Pegasus. Or he could transform him, himself a, into not, yeah, not, not a Pegasus, a Minotaur, right? Yeah. Is it a Minotaur where you're half horse? He is a. I don't remember which one it is. Or is that like bull? Um. I don't know. I don't it's know. all right. He was half horse. Yeah, but so that was Matt Hagen. Then there was Preston. you know whenever I see a weird river, I immediately dive into it. You immediately dive into weird rivers. Well, he dove into a weird river and he became well, yeah, a clay man. It looked cl- He's a treasure hunter. He like explores. Oh. Like he was looking for. Oh yeah, that explains it all. That's why you take off all your clothes and jump into a weird river. Yeah. Um, okay. I'm making sure to get the names. Right I do love the, the origin stuff though. Because some of this stuff is just freaking ridiculous. Yeah. Well, this is back. And then it gets retconned over the years, though, to be like oh, more plausible yeah. for the generation it's well, in, I guess. You and I were just talking about that, about a character that came up in one of the past episodes that we were wondering about. The Oh, it was the Joker. We were talking about the original origin of the Joker. Yeah, we covered it on World's Finest Wednesdays. Well, yeah, yeah. World's Finest Wednesdays. Yeah. It essentially talks about that. And it's the comic that Alan Moore then took from For the Killing Joke. Right, we were do, we did the Killing Joke, which we'll nobody, redo. We'll, we, we will redo it, but um, we were wondering about that the difference in the origin, and you went back and looked, and you said that it actually pays homage to the origin in the Killing Joke, which I thought was kind of cool. Yeah, 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 and so it was really cool to go back and look at that. Not too. everything um, has to be a joke, Zach. <laughs> So, um, also, there was a Preston Payne. There was a Sandra Fuller. Sandra Fuller. Sandra Fuller. Um, but the two main ones, because also the Clayface that I know is from the Batman the Animated Series. Yeah. From the 90s. Oh, um, yeah. See, that's what I think of right there. Yeah. And Big old melted blob. What he was, was they kind of mixed the first two origins. And so he was Matt Hagen, but he was an actor. Mm. And then also what his was is there was a in the uh, animated series is he uh, there was an accident and there was this product that Ronald Daggett, which was like a, you know, kind of businessman there in Gotham, sold him called Renew You, I believe is the name of it. What and it was name. like this cream that would like he could hide the scars and stuff from his accident but he noticed that it could also help him like move his face around and like shape shift. But the more he used it, like the more he kind of became addicted to it, the more it affected his skin. Like over time, it would like oh, he became down addicted to it. Yeah, I mean, like he would need more and more of it to be able to uh, keep up. Yeah, huh. the appearance. I'm okay. trying to remember. There's like a there's an accident because it all happens like in a lab and an accident, yeah. and he kind of becomes that clay face creature to where he can shape shift into anything. He can kind of you know absorb he absorbs in later like iterations is able to absorb the power yeah. of people like oh, through okay. it and stuff um but so, so he would literally like drop on people and take their powers like he could well there's well there's a wonder woman story i think where because she's kind of clay based yep. at one point in time wonder in, the george clay perez, based? in the george perez redo of wonder woman like zeus made her out of clay oh yeah. Oh, well, see, that makes sense when you say it that way. Yeah. Um, when so you just say she's clay-based. I haven't read that. Was that. So I know that's like something that's been brought up. But yeah. he can kind of like, anyway, but he can like shape, shift into like, he uses his clay to fight people and he okay. can turn himself into, you know. So how how uh, how much alike is Sandman? Well, Sandman doesn't necessarily like look like, like he can... He's always kind of sand still, is he not? So Clayface. Well, is, I guess he can turn into his human form. Yeah, he's 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 uh, what's his name from Wings. Yeah, I guess at some point in time, like we talked about with Hagen back in the Silver Age, like he could turn into like any kind of animal and stuff, kind of too. Thomas Hayden Church, right? Yeah, in yeah. the movie. Yeah. Um, Bad movie. I'm trying to see. It's not that. They I don't like tried it. Tried to squeeze a lot into it. It's the worst. It's of the too three. much. Yeah, it's too much. Um, you know, he's he's on board to like direct the next one. Raimi? Yeah. No, I didn't know that. And it's because after the uh, after the Doctor Strange thing, they were like, oh, that was great. Do it again. Oh, okay. Which, I mean, I'm all for letting him. I, I just think he needs to make a, like, in Marvel, you know, I mean, they've got a freaking vampire. They've got some weird dark uh, arts stuff. Yeah. You know, that's the kind of shit he ought to be directing. 
I don't know. If, so you could do weird shit with it. You know? I think they need to figure out something. They're they're concerned with bringing back things to get back on track to where they were before. I don't mm-hmm. think they're ready to take any more big risk like that anymore. Are you fixing to get Blade? Well, that's a whole different thing because you're you're and then now I you, get that, but I still stuck in development hell. But I'm saying you got witchcraft. You now have vampires. I mean, you know, I'm, what I'm saying, saying yeah, yeah, yeah. You're getting into a, a weird. Well, also you've got stuff happening in the cosmos yeah it's not all happening on earth so yeah they 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 need to rein it in just just a tad so uh do you remember the whole kind of concept i mean i'm sure you do that kind of uh but of last week's killing joke where it was all about all it would take was one bad day yeah to kind of drive anybody to sanity and so they did a lot of one shots off of that for all the different villains, and I've read through every single one, but the Raja Go one still couldn't get my hands on that between last time and this week. But still, they're you just all can't great. find it or the what? Riddler. Uh, I mean, locally, yeah, no. Huh. Um, but the Riddler's was really kind of just gritty and dark. Yeah, uh, Penguins was a really cool kind of just crime story. I really liked. Like, I enjoyed them all in their own way. Like uh, Two Faces was like a, a mystery that. You mm. might kind of see coming, but was still enjoyable in a way. Like yeah. I know people rank them all; and they have different things to say. But I enjoyed a lot of them, and I thought, um, "What was another one that was really good?" Well, I mean, Catwoman's was kind of heisty and kind of cool. When you watch a James Bond movie, you know what you're getting, but you yeah. still watch it. You know, yeah. But no, so I enjoyed every reading through every single one of them. Like yeah. that's why, like I read through them quickly. I enjoyed them all, so they're all good. And tell but me one I more thought, time what these are called. One, it's Batman. One bad day. One bad day. There you go. It's a villain. So there's yeah. Clayface. There's Bane. Yeah. Bane was a good one. Um, yeah. All really good. Um, and I thought it was the perfect way to kind of tie us into um, the scary season with October Far Horror Comics. Heck yeah. With Clayface's story because it's it's a really good story and it's a solo story by itself that is kind of just creepy and great in its own. And we're gonna go ahead and dive into it. Uh, right now, or I guess coming up after this, right here <laughs> on Bros, Foes, and Heroes. Welcome back into Bros, Foes, and Heroes. Uh, as we go ahead and continue our episode on Clayface, it's time to get into the story that we're going to cover today, and that is the One More Day one shot. This is a story that takes place, it's not canonically, but essentially what you need to know before we dive into the story, Mike, and it's kind of brought up a little bit as we get into it. Let's go ahead and show, there we go, the cover for what we're getting into. That's a cool cover. It's a really cool cover. Yeah. Um, Clayface is gigantic, though. It is. So it's Batman, One Bad Day, and it's the Clayface, number one. Each um, villain's had was their number one for that issue. Um, Colin Kelly and Jackson Lansing were the writers. Uh, Zermanico did the art, and then Romulo... uh, Fajardo Jr. I know I butchered that, and I apologize. Um, it's I'd, like watching a, a, a car crash, like real slowly. I know. <laughs> I just I, I want to try, and then I'm like, it's gonna be bad. So I do apologize. Well, I, I was mean, I was like, impressed. It's great. The whole like, the, the team that worked on it did amazing work. I was impressed by Zermanico. Yeah, I well, mean, thank nice you. job. Thank you. Yeah, I wouldn't. Um, have, I wouldn't have got it on the first shot. Well, um, Zeman so, Hanako or something. <laughs> So what essentially we're taking from the first part, like I gave you the backgrounds, what our yeah. ba- our, uh, our Basil Carlo is in this instance of Clayface is that it's a mixture of the first two Clayfaces in a way, backstory-wise. Right. So it's Basil Carlo, who was the actor. Well, they took they the have. cooler name, too. It is. Yeah. Um, and he's been an actor for a while, but obviously, like, it's a similar. I would assume it's like a similar outcome, of some way, shape, or form from like the Batman the animated series story sure. of where he had an accident and things. You know, it eventually drove him the either the chemicals from what he was using or there was an accident that turned him into Clayface, where he can like turn himself into anybody from like studying. Them. He's kind of liquid, but he can uh, become or he can emulate 
And yeah, Almost he's like anybody. like clay. Like he can, does he you know. emulate things too? So this version and the sword we're gonna cover, it's just people. Hmm. So um, I'm gonna say that, and sometimes like the Matt Hagen original one back in the Silver Age, like he turned himself into a snake. So I assume he oh, could yeah, maybe turn himself into that. things too. Yeah. Also, I know you haven't watched the Harley Quinn animated series on HBO Max, know. but Alan Tudyk voices Clayface in that, and it's a completely, it's a comedic like. Think of like John Lovitz in that SNL bit, like acting kind acting. of like character. Yeah. Yeah. And it's pretty funny in um, that show. But so it kind of mashes the origins of characters together. And we're introduced to a clay face that is I do love how it because um, the story in a lot of ways has to do with L.A. a lot then, too. Um and just Los the Angeles? culture, yeah, and just the culture, oh. or in Hollywood, and just okay. the culture out there. Oh, because of him being an actor. Exactly. Gotcha, gotcha. So it opens with like a script page of Clayface or Clay's apartment. Okay. So that script page there, that's mostly white page, that's in the comic book. Yeah, that's a page in the wow, comic book. Wow, that's cool. Um, and so it's just I like, like how a script. it spiraled on the side too. Yeah, like and so it's be, just uh, like a script. It would, and it yeah. like paces out. What a setting there happens, and it oh, kind of describes the home. That's a great a device. Oh, the way they tell this yeah, is fantastic. That's a great device to use. And then we see, as he kind of gives the history of, this is a Clayface that's already turned into Clayface, and he's been in Gotham for a long time, and he's dealt with Batman a lot. Sure. But he has finally decided, you know what? I'm done with that. I want to. I can be an actor. I used to be an actor. Like I'm a. I'm a great actor. Yeah. Let me go pursue that life again out in Hollywood. Mm. And so we see like this amalgamation kind of of different like pictures cut up of a face as he's just a pool of like clay there in the bathtub yeah. before transforming into as he's kind of like introducing us to who he is. Talking about that he studied at Juilliard and the years he spent at the Wayne. Cons uh, conservatory and everything that he played in a lot of it being in gotham and all that and he's like my name is basil, basil carlisle and i'm here for the audition Holy as he's crap. kind of using that amalgamation that he put together yeah. as like inspiration to turn into so that that picture right there mm -hmm. well minus the toilet that reminds me of like well it's him in his bathroom well i know but i'm saying it, it reminds me of like a swamp thing or something like that you know yeah. it's got that same kind of formation he kind of like body wise the way yeah. they build it he does kind of have that yeah. same formation um what we're introduced to though then and it shows us kind of like i told you of where he transforms into mm. the picture that he had cut up and now he is a character or he is this new person out in hollywood named clay just you know he's clay Cut off the yeah, face part. Sure. Makes sense. Um, we see that he's like a waiter with a lot of other people trying to make it up in ho or you know, of the stories you see of trying to make it in Hollywood over their work at places, like reading for scripts and stuff like that. And we see that Clay has – I'm going to go ahead and switch so I can look to make sure I get the names right. Clay has uh, a couple friends that work with him. One doesn't get a name, unfortunately, but the other two do. Jill. One of them is Cat is the gr woman that he works with and then Corey, who we're going to see a little bit more and he makes these friends while working there and they're going to come up a bit later in the episode but it's like the real people who like he connects with because they're all out there on that same journey of wanting right. to be actors and trying to um you know turn that into a profession yeah so like each one of them talks about how it's almost like a fraternity yeah yeah. So see, uh, the top uh, the top guy does not get a name, unfortunately. Cat's the girl in glasses, and Corey's the dark haired guy, and they're all just like sharing stories of like you know where they're from, things they've learned, stuff like that. And it's the first friends that Clay feels like he's made. Right. Well, he finds out that um, while working a shift, he overhears that Corey is reading for one of the same roles that Clay is. Uh oh. But they decide, hey, we'll both go and audition together. And Clay gives this just this impassioned um, speech. And I want to read it real quick. I know you're probably not going to pick up on it, but still just some of it where he's like sitting there. It's this this speech where it's like, you know, honestly, Janine, I don't blame you. Like, I have to admit uh, everything. Or, uh, but you'll you'll you're well within your rights. After all, I've been a freaking monster. Like he just like he's admitting to being this horrible person 
of just this crazy like just killer in a way yeah so he's um, almost he's almost given a confession, but he's given it as a soliloquy to or part his, of an audition. Yeah, for, but yeah. and he's giving this impassioned speech yeah. to his wife. Uh, the name is funny, and you'll see the um, what it references later. That's part of the reason why I liked it. Okay. But he gives this whole thing, and after he's done, the casting agent just kind of like pauses and goes, "Oh yeah, no, really impassioned speech. Like I could really feel what you're going for. Could you lighten it up though?" Yeah. And he's like, well, what do you mean, lighten it up? And he's like, he's a comedian. Like, it should be funnier. And Clay, I'll call him Clay and Clayface, because it's yeah. the same. Yeah. Clay just goes, but he's murdered people. Like, I like, he's been through all this tough stuff. And she goes, yeah, but it's also supposed to be about love, too, like he and his wife. And he goes, that's the biggest thing that's getting him over this hump. Like, he obviously has this image in his head of the way this direction of this how this character should go and it's different than what the casting agents are seeing so they're like okay well thanks for reading for us we'll be in touch or yeah. we'll let you know kind of thing so it's he and cory age old story of like you know auditioning for a thing and you know not getting it right because the producers are trying to make something for the unwashed masses exactly so cory and clay go up to uh, overlook the city and clay is nervous telling him like i'm sorry Corey's nervous saying like hey they said that i had like a likable quirkiness like maybe you know that's right. some kind of cool thing for me and they're just talking about how it was and clay's just like they just don't see the vision of the character like they missed it like they just don't like he's just explaining of how like they don't understand what i see in this they just don't get it and clay finds out he gets a call from an unknown number and he's answering the call and Clayface, I guess sometimes when you just kind of like the anger in him is just a little too much or like his emotions become a lot. You can see like the clay monster kind of come out a bit. Yeah, it's kind of like um, seeing the reptiles. And he's like, I have government. a vision, like talking about this character that he's reading for. And about that time, Corey looks back at him and tells him, hey, I, I, I got the part that we read for. And he gives on this whole spiel about how. You know, he never thought he'd have something and finally it clicked for him. And he's so yeah. happy he got the role. And he turns back around to get reassurance from Clay. And Clay has morphed into Corey. And he just stares back at him until he walks over to Corey and suffocates him. Because if Clay can't have the role that way, yeah, then he's still going to want the role. He'll just be the guy. And he tosses him in the back of the trunk. And I love how it does have all the like art cuts in there and stuff. So they're like yeah. smash cut too. Yeah. And we see him now looking like Corey as he heads on to a movie set. Wow. And he is there to read. And the thing I wanted to bring up and mention the name for Janine, do you notice what movie he's shooting there then? It says, picture up in an hour, The Killing Joke, scene 31, oh, wow. take one, common Mark. And so the role that he's reading for is Joker's character in The Killing Joke. Yeah. See how he's holding the red hood there? And I thought it was a cool little, like, throwback to that the fact cool. that it was supposed to be all these one bad days yeah, so the movie a wink, and a, wink and a nod kind of thing. exactly yeah. so the movie that they're shooting that clayface is now trying to be in is the killing joke movie huh. which is funny because they did make a killing joke movie which uh, people don't necessarily care for too much because yeah, they added like a whole 45 minutes that doesn't exist in the comics to it and batman sleeps with batgirl for no reason and it's weird Gross. um but it's Mark Hamill as the Joker. It's animated. So, yeah, it's animated. Yeah. Um, so while he's sitting there, and I'll go back and forth to the comics. Why would they add then. 45 minutes? That's crazy. Huh? Why would they add all that time? To make it like a 90-minute movie Whatever. instead of just like a 40-minute movie? Just make it. Make I don't it know. Like maybe it's not 45, but, it's, but there's you know an added I mean? story like, to like it. Like, just make it. Yeah. Who um, gives a crap now how long things are? True. No. I mean, well, some people do. Well... Okay. I, I don't know. I feel like if it's kind of daunting to ask somebody to be like, hey, watch a two-hour cartoon. Yeah, it's true. For some people, I assume. I mean, I would do it. But um, So then he goes Do you have a problem calling it a cartoon? No. Okay. Should I? No, I'm just asking. It just seems like reductive almost. You're making me feel like no, maybe no, no, I should no, no, feel no. bad for calling it a no, cartoon. No, 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 no. I, uh, um, I, there's people out there that say, oh, no, 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 it's an animated feature or whatever, and they refuse to say the word cartoon. You you know people who just refer to them as animated features? Um, no, but I hear it happens. 
<laughs> I hate I that know, excuse man. so much, the no, but I hear it happens. <laughs> I got, have I ever told the story? I mean, I won't get into all of it, but it was essentially like, I, we door dashed food. Yeah. And it was delivered to the wrong house. Oh. And I went to pick it up. And I rang the ring doorbell and nobody answered. So I rang it a second time, or maybe it was still on, like I could tell, you know, the light. Yeah. And so I just picked up, showed the food, and I pointed at myself. I don't know why. Yeah. I guess I could have talked, too. Sure. I think I'm, I'm maybe, and I just pointed next door. I was like, you know, this okay. is our food, wrong yeah. house, because they delivered it to the house next to us. Yeah. And then I got accused of stealing packages. <laughs> You're a porch pirate. Yeah. Because uh, you and stole I your just, hot dog back. And I just remember when my wife was talking to somebody there. Of saying like, oh no, like have you had that happen before? And it was no, but we've heard about it. <laughs> ah, that's funny. So yeah, that's really good. Yeah. I anyway, I, I I didn't know if that was a thing, you know, animated feature versus cartoon. Not to me. Okay. I don't know. Anyway, because uh, my wife calls them cartoons, cartoons, but she's always like, "You watching your cartoon?" I mean, that just sounds. You yeah. Know. No, I get that. Maybe it's well, just the way you say it. Well, I don't know, honey. Are you watching your shitty NCIS? I don't Ooh. Know. Yeah. So you take that Boom. NCIS. I yeah, did it. That's a shot across the bow. This Take will that be the, NCIS This will be the Hawaii. episode they talk about when they bring up that feud we had with <laughs> NCIS. Um, so, Gary Cole hates us. So Clay, now looking like Corey, goes to do the scene for the movie, right? Right. And he gives that view, that but same, the way he Corey. sees the character. It's not Corey, it's Clayface. Right. And he does the lines the way he did for the casting director. Okay. All in, in like super sweaty and stuff super sweaty and stuff well you know what i mean like he's really into it like overdoing the lines and all that well but he's just like he feels like this pain with it like he's like you know mm. it's just very emotional for him that he like reads through it and the director yells cut and like the woman playing the wife is like oh i thought we were pretty good and he's like no you did great uh i need to talk to you Corey. like where i now you decide to go ahead and take these reins like we need something more relatable and he's like well, what's not relatable about sadness like the shame he feels like and he just like goes back and forth with him about this and the director goes okay you're going to be one of those kind of actors fine and he goes everybody take 10 i gotta call a guy about a horse and everybody just kind of like hangs their head and just like call a guy about a horse weirdly walks off the set and we see ba- basil now uh back in his trailer as he's starting to melt and he is it says you're the horse basil like he knows like it's it's me that you know didn't i messed this up didn't see a guy about a horse usually mean you gotta go pee i don't think that it means or I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have to look this up um <laughs> i don't I think it it's was. directed to that see a guy about a horse okay it pops up you gotta see a man about a horse. see a man about a horse is an idiom that means you are leaving a conversation or gathering without revealing your true destination oh okay so maybe it is because you don't want to tell people you were going to go use the right. bathroom. In my stupid world where I grew up, my father would say that and then he'd go off to do his dirty business or whatever. So I, I always associated it with, I got to go to the bathroom. Oh, uh, I got you. I, gotta go well, see a man about yeah, I don't think it was pee, though. I think it was the other. Well, that, that explains stuff. That the, more, the more I hear sometimes about <laughs> you and your family, it explains <laughs> a lot. That goes right into the clay face thing, though. See? Uh, Big pile of poop. Uh, no, this isn't conquer ba- conquers bad fur fur day for N sixty four. Man, that took bad me forever to get bad day. What that. kind of reference? I had a singing poo in it. Holy shit! Yeah, no. <laughs> it did. So in today, just today, yeah, we've talked about conquers bad fur day. Yeah, and we've talked about Earthworm Jim. That is true. We did talk about Earthworm Jim <laughs> earlier too. Those are two very old video games. Oh man. Um. So Yahoo! as it's. One of the studio execs that kind of comes in, or maybe it was like the casting agent herself okay. that comes in and is like, you're like, I can't believe you did that. Like after, I think it's the casting agent. Like after I took, you know, this belief in you, you went ahead and you just pulled that stunt. Yep. Like, yeah, you got fired. I don't know if you're ever going to work again. I don't know what's going to happen to me. Like oh, she's, they fired you know, him? they fired him for oh, like, t- yeah. And she's you like, acted too hard. she's like, hopefully if you find work again, you understand like how scripts work. Or how sets work, and he just kind of loses it, and he suffocates her too, the same way that he did um, Clay earlier. 
And Corey. so what we have then is he steps out of the trailer, yeah. and he's now and now he's her looked like her because she goes you don't understand, and so he's all like no you don't understand. This leads us on a montage, and I love it says begin montage because it's very Hollywood yeah, it's like, like script, script right yeah, and it shows him moving from one person to the next person to the next person of different people on the set just killing them off until eventually the director walks back on stage or to where they were to shoot to the scene of just carnage that's there yeah. from Clayface. Yeah. And Clayface looks at him and goes, you're one of those directors. You don't help others. Uh, you don't help other people. You don't value the art. You don't see what I see. I hate you, Mr. Director. I was hoping you'd be last. And he goes, and I love you see the teeth there to kind of like eat them up at the end. Yeah. Um, so I didn't now Clayface was so brutal. Well, he is in this story. Yeah. Um, so he not, then after he takes care of the, the director, he gets a call, and I believe the director is named Harry or maybe Max. I don't remember. Harry it's Max. Harry or Max. One of them is the studio head, then essentially that calls the director that is now Clayface and is like, "Hey, I need to meet with you." And so what happens is, as I sit here and switch between all my. Um, he turns into the director and he goes and sees the studio head and the studio head is telling him like, Hey, we're shutting down the killing joke movie. Like it's done. It's not happening. And he's like, what do you, you don't understand? Like, this is my masterpiece. This is my work of art. I just got rid of a lot of the staff. I'm recasting. Like, it's going to be great. You got to let me do this. Like this is whole big passion project in a way for Clayface. Like he yeah. really wants to tell this story because he feels like he knows this story being a villain from Gotham and right. looking for redemption. He knows this. Yeah. Um, and the studio head is essentially tells him like, Hey, I wasn't here when it got signed off on. We got this gray ghost franchise. We're about to start, which is like a Gotham universe superhero. Like they used to do like old radio serials, kind of like the Lone Ranger and like comic books. It's like right. their, ver you know, version right, of, right, a, right, right. Yeah. I think there was a TV show at some point in time, a character that Bruce Wayne, like as a kid really loved. Um, oh, yeah, okay. So he's like, we have this gray ghost like franchise, the zombie guy, I guess, you know, like talking about another franchise could help you back you up on it. Like, you know, we can make it work and you can try your hand at that. But this, this has no franchise capability. We're just killing this. Like, you know, we're done with it. And he's like, and honestly, long term North Star, we're doing it for the fans. Mm -hmm. And about that time, Clayface just boom, like unleashes on the studio head then. And we see as he takes care of him and sees his lavish, lavish, lavish lifestyle that he lives that that is what he wants to take over then now so can i ask you a question real quick go ahead what does he do with the bones and stuff i don't does know he where he stores the body them? no because remember like i think he just suffocates them in there and then he disposes of the body somehow because okay. the body was always there on the floor of the person he just killed yeah that's true um okay. and he had Corey in the back of the trunk after he took care of him up on the peak of the valve the hill there yeah um so he's now like this giant studio head who he's impersonating and he throws this huge party inviting everybody but he has two very special vips that he want to make sure attend because this he it's the only friend real friends that he's ever had yeah. and so we'll get back to our story and so what it is is it's cat and the man without a name oh okay um but the two waiters from earlier. Yeah. Because they're the ones that were on his level. Like, he invites them there. And he's like, right, hey, right, right. I got you guys the invite. We're going to be, you know, your VIPs tonight all on me. And so they're sitting there. And, like, Clay's trying. Clay, I think, has a thing for Kat. Okay. Um, and Kat's just kind of nervous because she hasn't heard from Corey in a while. Yeah. And she's like, you know, I'm happy that, you know, you're able to find success in this. But. Your breath smells like Corey. <laughs> What is that? Um, walking around, though, I really love this scene because this to me is when the story takes a turn. I like when they see that. So he's walking around like just to go find, I think, somebody else or get a drink. I can't remember sure. why he leaves Cat up on the, yeah. the, the roof there of the building. But as he's walking, the assistant of the studio head who he was impersonating comes by and is like, hey, have you seen Mr. Silverman? Which is Harry. Have you seen Harry You know Silverman? And he's like, no, I was just looking for him. And you hear another voice go, oh, I was too. Funny. Um, and as far as I can tell, I flew across the country to meet him. 
and it's a man that's not even attending his own a party, uh, his own party. And about that time, Clay or Clayface, but in looking like Clay, yeah, I was like, who, who, what are you? I mean, Gotham's on the other side of the country. He just realized like you're you're Bruce Wayne, mm-hmm. and it's not a sense of because I thought about reading this at first of like, does Clayface know who Batman is? And it's not a sense of that. I think it's just a sense of general of Clayface has been trying to run away from Gotham. And Bruce represents Gotham has now followed him to Hollywood. Yeah. Like him being that monster in Gotham. No, he was going to come make himself here in Hollywood. Yeah. And now Bruce Wayne has showed up. But Bruce is telling him like, hey, I just showed up to talk to him about this gray ghost stuff. If you like find him just let me know and that's where it says like it has the script writing in there and it's like flashback clayface struggles to maintain his form as batman uh you know frozen fist crack into his chest he's just having flashbacks of gotham not because to me i don't think not because bruce is batman but just the thought of gotham city in general sure so this spells the beginning like of said, the end. Like you said, that's everything he wanted to get away from. Exactly. And it followed him there. Yeah, this spells you. the beginning of the end for Clayface. Okay. And so he kind of, hey oh, there. that's lovely. That's not what I meant hey to there, do. Hey there, everybody. Hey and there. so he goes back up to the roof to see Cat, and it's not going to let me do it. No, I love that. And um, while he's up there to see her, I guess let me show you guys uh, the power of pictures. Ooh. He loses, like, all composure there, yeah. right? And so he sits there, he turns into the director. It's like, you know, you're going to be one of those actors. You're an insp- Like, he's just, like, sitting there, like, mm-hmm. beating himself up with the voices in his head of being of the actual people, like, he killed. And it's all like, no, you're not. You know exactly what you're going to be. Trash. And I love how it says, like, Clay, voiceover, I'm not trash. And the script down there, I'm a star. So it's him, like, talking himself through it in a mirror. And he goes back then to see Cap. While he's up there seeing Cat, she essentially goes like, "Where's Clay? We haven't heard from Clay in a while. Like, where is he? You know where he is, right?" And he's like, "I don't know, man. Like, maybe he got that job, or I got that job. He and she's like, or that he goes, I got that job, and she's like, No, Clay got that part. I, I think like she knows that, or she just knows that she hasn't heard from him. Yeah. Um. And about that time, he's like, Guys, I have to tell you something. Wait, Clay or Corey? Corey got that part, Corey. but I don't think she okay. knows. I'm, okay. I think I'm just interjecting on the story. Well, she just she she knows. I guess she knows that Corey got the job. Yeah, but I'm just realizing she probably doesn't because he oh. got the text and then Clayface just killed him. Oh, okay. But she does know. She does bring up the fact that like he's been missing for, uh, like haven't heard from him in weeks, and he finally tells weeks. him like, guys, I need to tell you, my name's not Clay, it's Basil Carlo, and Cat puts two and two together as the other guy's like, okay, that's cool. We all like change our name when we come out here. Yeah. And she's like, no, you're C- Carlo, Clay, you're Clayface. And then the other guy's like, oh yeah, you're famous. And she's like, you, you've killed people. Like, did you? Where's Corey? Where's Corey? And that's like she starts like putting two and two together yeah. there of why they yeah. haven't heard from Corey. And so he's sitting there like trying to calm her down. And she's getting kind of loud, so the people down on the floor below, like, partying are like, oh, hey, what's going on up there? Because he's getting all nervous and emotional, and, like, he's starting to lose form and stuff. And he turns into the studio head whose house they're having the party at. Like, he, Clayface turns into the form of him and goes, like, hey, everybody, like, hope everybody's having fun. And about the time the other waiter, like, takes his bottle and breaks it and, like, or, like tries to hit through Clayface with it. And he just kind of like turns into clay, like the like pool, yeah. And then like back into his form of clay, and he looks, and Cat is like in tears, calling nine one one, showing him like I've called the police here, like you can't get away with this, right, right. And so Clayface now having everything crash down around him, not being able to portray the vision he had for this character, not wanting to see or you know not having anybody recognize the vision he had. And it's all the way up. It's not turning out like he wanted to at well, all in any of this. followed him there. Exactly. He failed at getting the role. He failed at being a friend. All he of it. Did it's, all of this stuff, yeah. It's all too much for him. Yeah. And so he's like, everybody, like, I'm, I'm everyone. Like, it's my turn to finally have something. <laughs> and so he, like, runs away. And I love the art in this. He just runs away from he's the party there. Dude. Yeah. Um, but eventually... 
because he like sits there and he goes, why is it raining? Why did you bring the rain? Like thinking of Bruce, like with yeah. Gotham City and bringing yeah. it there yeah, yeah, to yeah. him. And there's he has this whole thing of like everybody smiles, but they're not smiles. Like it's just knives, it's daggers that cut through me. There's some really great words and stuff just written through. It's a really well written book. Right. I'm just you know I recommend reading it. It's so, so good. So this is his one bad day. All of this stuff crashing around. Him. This is all yeah. This is essentially kind of all like okay. one. I mean, it's more than a day, but like the right. The, I get you. Yeah. I get you. But it, it's it's kind of symbolic for everything coming exactly. to a head at one time. Yeah. And so he's Why like, does the rain not melt him? It kind of in some stories he does have like a where water like bugs him like yeah. it can in I others he so. doesn't yeah i mean he's made out of clay yeah um clay electricity does too i think mixing the two probably um electricity, water electricity. And water? yeah i mean that that yeah. hurt anybody that yeah, would hurt almost um, anybody yeah but and so he's sitting there telling him like you know the city he and as he sits there and gives this whole dialogue it's like the city is just filled with nothing but fake people yeah like nothing sees the vision I have. Nobody wants to be real. They want to be dark, but not you know, a, a not too dark. They want to be sexy, but not too sexy. Like they want these things, but they don't want these things. You He's like, it's all. Little, he kind of does. I, well, I was just gonna say, you got to put a little bit back on yourself there, Clay. True. Well, because I mean, you came to this place looking for the same thing you're now bitching about. That's true. Well, and he sits there and he goes like, everybody wants to be something else. Everybody wants to pretend to be something else. This city deserves me, is what he says. Like, I belong here. That's acting. And that is then Actor. when Batman just kind of off panel is like, nine people, is what he tells him. Yeah. Like, essentially, like, that wasn't your art. And Holy I love shit, how good cool. he looks there. Um, But he's like, nine Ooh. people in one day. So the one day is the set to yeah. tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he goes, nothing else matters he's like that wasn't your story to tell that's their story that's nine people you've killed i if i could get just a still of batman like that standing in the rain all cattywampus i yeah. would put that on a wall that's that looks really cool so i love cool. it's it's the middle of the spread so it's a two-page yeah, yeah, yeah. spread yeah. of Clayface looking at him too as he does just kind of like drip off yeah like the art throughout this whole thing is absolutely fantastic i guess it would take a lot of water to just completely melt a big solid clay oh lump. yeah yeah it kind of probably make it more malleable i would think yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um or at so, least the outside so the two of them fight they have a little bit of a squirmish. Squirmish? Squirmish? Uh, a tit for tat. A Donnybrook, if you will. A Donnybrook. You and gotta do this whenever you... Batman is able to, while they fight, use this little um, like invention of his that obviously is electricity-based that kind of vacuums up Clayface. Oh, that's why you said this. Yes. See? While he Ooh. sits there, and it has the script instructions of the fade to black. As he sucks them all in there. He's like, all the things you talk about, like the lives, yeah, that was their story to tell. You trying to do that, you're just acting. Is it like is it like the Ghostbusters thing? It kind of is it like the sucks Ghostbusters him into thing. A, a box. And you see his eyes, though, there, peeking out through the bat symbol still. Yeah. And then we get, and I love the way they Those shot this again. Too. Interior, Clay's apartment, night. Hmm. white walls and gray carpets like it starts off the same way it does but instead you see all these people just working around and somebody like typing a script on a laptop and it finishes like this place could be an asylum like the Clayface story is being written into a script already it's kind of what it yeah. leads to yeah and then we close out our comic and i really love the way i close this out so like I mean, obviously, it's spoilers to everything with, sure. Well, by the time we're at this point. But we get a nice two-page panel of Gotham, mm -hmm. and then we get, you don't believe me. Of course you don't. Huh. Honestly, Janine, I don't blame you. I have to admit it. But you were well within your rights. It's the same monologue the yeah. whole time. Yeah. The one that he gave the audition yeah. for, the one that he did on set, and now it's here again. And he goes through it all, and it's like, all because I thought I lost you. But I didn't. Not if you take me back, because the only thing stronger than depression is love. It's blue skies ahead, Janine. This is just one bad day. And it's Clayface, but he has, like, the face of Clay, the yeah. character. Yeah. And you see all these little just kind of, like, uh, legs just peering off of him. And you see, like, it goes off to all these different branches. And it's he goes, 
it's still I'm working on it. Do you, do you have any adjustments? And then he kind of turns into more of the clay face monster. And he's like, I'm not, I'm not precious. I don't want to be one of those kind of actors. Like any notes at all, any notes at all. I'll take them. I'm, I'm very open to feedback. Oh, wow. And it just ends of him obviously feeling guilt for the nine people like he killed there. Yeah. As you see, those are the nine people that he's kind of like turned into beans watching him give this very heartfelt emotional monologue aren't there 10 people there nine one two three four five six seven eight nine ten there are 10 people so i wonder if one of maybe them there's is, somebody else at the party or maybe one of the people is clay I, that's what i was gonna say i bet one of them is him because i mean you can go through when you look at the comic and you can yeah. make out other people that you see there yeah but i'm saying or maybe like, it was somebody in the clay, clay donnie brook from earlier but i mean clay was a creation of his anyway right that's i mean true. he's not really that guy Nope, but so that would be ten. So there you huh. go. That's very cool. I like the ending. And there you go. That is Clayface. One bad day. I thought it was a really good, just kind of villain Clayface yeah. story, but also a very creepy element and just kind of a cool story in general to it all. It's really good. I recommend going and reading it for yourself. Recommending any and all of the uh, bad day one shots because they were all really good. Um, that, next week, that ending. Before you get into that, I'm sorry. That ending reminds me of the movie The Thing. Yes. Like it very much looks like that head that comes off of the guy and starts yes. crawling around and stuff. It's very cool. Very much so. Yeah. Like if you're listening to this, just picture that. Yeah. Well, I mean, even if you're watching it, I don't have a picture of it. So you well, can you look it up one. after you that. Well, you had one up. It was great. Well, of the other thing, but not yeah. of the thing that well, you're talking about. We'll watch the thing. I don't know. Well, there you go. Um, next week on our full show, we're going to get into the spooky season. I think some people call it that. Halloween as we dive into some horror comics. I think... Um, we will probably do Swamp Thing. It's either nice. going to be Swamp Thing or Something's Killing the Children, one of the two there. Um, and then also we'll have a World's Finest Wednesday coming up on Wednesday. That'll be cool. more silly and zany. Um, I would cover uh, – we did more serious with the showing you what the Red Hood episode uh, or the Red Hood issue with that killing joke um, – Alan Moore pulled from yeah. on last week's World's Finest. If I could talk, I don't even know if that can we get makes uh, sense. can we get Batman pretend to be Superman again and Superman. I mean that happens a lot. I have Spider-Man some stories with the Super Sons. Which Super is like, Sons, which is like Batman Junior. Yeah. There's one where it's like Caveman Superman <laughs> versus <laughs> call it Batman versus Jr. future Batman who has like a giant like massive head for a brain oh. or a brain for, on his head like he's yeah. just swelled. Yeah. Um, you and got a big old one. head. The one I have that I'll probably do for Wednesday is like Batman is able to like go in and out of mirrors. I don't know how, but he looks like a funhouse mirror at one point in time. So I figured you just giggle at the way he looked. Why? I don't know. I haven't read it yet. Oh so God, we'll, so we can weird. find out on Wednesday. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm looking forward to that. I want to find out. Plus, I'm really looking forward to the Swamp Thing because Swamp Thing, Man Thing, both of those guys. I am not well versed in that story at all. Oh, I'm the not only, either. This oh god. I'm sorry. The only thing I know about Swamp Thing is the Adrian Barbeau movie. Okay. See, they re brought up the series, the saga of Swamp Thing yeah. to help thinking Never the movie that. would boost sales of the comic yeah. Yeah. and it didn't. And then Alan Moore took over with issue twenty and that's when people are like, Oh, that's when the character gets good. So what I have is volume one of the saga Swamp Thing, and it collects like seven issues, I think. It's before him? No, this is when he takes oh, over. It is when he this takes is over. the okay. first of him taking yeah. over. The people look like, oh, he reinvented the character. Like he gives kind of a new origin for it. So I'm planning on reading through those seven issues and giving a more condensed look at that. Yeah. And that's what we'll do for our intro to Swamp Thing. I think that this is what James Gunn, at least in theory, in this universe of the DCEU or just the DCU, whatever they're calling yeah. it now, yeah. is going to base it off of. Did you see. Who got cast as Hal Jordan? No. Oh, um, dang it. Uh, Kyle Chandler. Who is that? From Friday Night Lights, the TV oh, show. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. From, okay. um, what was the one where he and his brother Full were like on the- Clear Eyes Can't Lose. Yeah, that, yeah. Supernatural? No, it wasn't a Supernatural. Early edition? Um, early edition. Do you remember that? Good he God. was an early where edition. Where the paper would get there a day yeah, early? Yeah, but he was in that. Um, <laughs> oh, no, there's going to be a murder tomorrow. There was also the- not Badlands. I don't know. There was one where he was like, he. I don't know. But yeah, Kyle Chandler is going to be Hal Jordan. Kyle Chandler. I, I think it's only going to be, it's only a one-year contract. So I think uh, he might die in this. They're going to kill him off. Maybe. Or he's not. They don't have plans for him after this. You said Kyle what? Comes up. Chandler. Yeah. Do you not know who I'm talking about? I still? don't think I do. I'm looking. I'm looking now. All oh, right. he's the coach. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, he was in Argo and Super 8. He's Friday been in a lot Night. of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, he's great. Oh, he's in Super Pumped. I remember that. Did you watch Super Pumped? No. It was about the invention of Uber. No. With, uh, what's his face? Um, oh, shoot. Oh, he's the, he's the Joseph FB- Gordon-Levitt. He's the FBI. Or- Robin. Oh, okay. Well, Joseph Gordon-Levitt was Robin. Yeah, no. Oh, At the end of the Batman duh. stuff. No, yeah. he wasn't. No, he wasn't. Yeah, he was. I think that's silly. He's Robin. I think that's silly. He's Robin. Um, <laughs> there was something I was going to say about who we were just talking about. Man, I'm blanking hard. Oh, you're having a rough day. No, oh, about Kyle Chandler. Kyle Chandler. He's also the DEA or FBI or whatever agent is um, going after uh, Leo in uh, – Wolf of Wall Street, Jordan Belfort. Oh, yeah. Damn, yeah. he's been in a lot of stuff. He was in yes. a couple of the Godzilla movies. But mainly early edition is what we remember him from. Yeah, early edition, that's exactly yep. what uh, I'm anyway, pulling Anyway, I just thought ass. I'd throw that little nugget out there. Um, as always, thank you guys for taking the time out to listen or watch this podcast. We appreciate it very much. Can't tell you how much uh, I appreciate all the little comments. And the stuff feedback is, is honestly, it's like... A it, breath of fresh air for us every day, every time we get one. Yeah. Whether it's bad, good, whatever, it's just cool to know that there are people out there who listen to this and yeah. and go, oh, I kind of like that enough to comment. I that's mean, true. that's no, for that's sure. amazing for sure. And I hope we help. Yeah. You know, in any way we can. The good, yeah. nice ones. I mean, well, I'm not going to help you move, lot. but well, yeah, nothing with physical yeah. activity, but yeah, no. any other way we can. Um, as always, want to just help plug everybody else. So make sure to check out all the great podcasts on the Rogue Media Network family podcasts of. The Rogue Media Network <laughs> family of podcasts. I keep getting ready to say it. RogueMediaNetwork.com. And until next week or later this week, <laughs> stay safe, everybody. Bye, Kyle Chandler. Golly Khan. Kyle Chandler. <laughs> Frozen. Frozen. Heroes. Gonna tell you about Frozen. Frozen. Heroes. Gonna tell you about This has been a Rogue Media Network production.